Thank you, Brother Stanley. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed. Good morning still to us. Um, still in morning. Hallelujah. I want to thank God. I want to thank God for everyone here today. I want to thank God to the equipment team. I want to thank God to our church, our elders, leadership of our church, for giving me the privilege to, to exercise um, this ministry. And this church has buying to this ministry. It's on our yearly calendar. We're the only church in Guyana that really prays and, and set aside a day to observe and to pray for seafarers. Right? This is a special day. Let me pray for those seafarers. I want to thank you for the team that God has given me now to work with. Um, Brother Clark, Brother Sandy, and Brother Stanley. Hallelujah. Give them a hand. Hallelujah. So it's not I alone. And, you know, years ago, with I would old program everything. I do everything. I, you know, do everything. But thank God he wants us to participate. He wants us to work in teams. Amen? And I was praying all those times. And in campuses of Christ, our prayer request was for, for the full power of a core group. Well, thank God this year, God has given me a core group that we're working together. Hallelujah. And things are getting better. Amen? I, want, I must applaud um, the church to an equipment team. Things are getting better. I see more efficiency. I see our, our things are, our program is being, you know, promo, um, is, is being produced or present in a real excellent manner, excellent way. So give them a hand. Hallelujah. You know, the church, we've invested a lot and we keep investing to, to make things better for the service. So all this is participation and partnering in, in the work of the Lord. So the money that we give the church is being invested in so that we could have a better pro, um, product so the work could receive um, and people that come to our church could receive good, a good uh, presentation and they could hear the gospel. Hallelujah abroad. And I think I was giving thanks that every time I pray, as Paul says to the, the Philippians, in all my prayer, for all of you, I always pray with joy. Hallelujah. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Hallelujah. Thank you for your partnership. I want to thank Brother Mac, one of the persons that um, endorsed this ministry firstly with the, with the eldership, with the leadership of this church, almost 15 years ago. And since then, this church has been a partner with me. Campus Crusade has been a partner with me. And many of you here are partners with me through your faith giving. When you give faith offering, I'm one of the missionaries that this church supports. Right? So part, when you give to faith promising, you're giving to the, the money that they give to help me. And then those that give personally to the Port of Hope Ministry to keep the Port of Hope Ministry running, to keep the feet on the deck, you know, keep things going there and to buy um, ministry, have to buy the ministry um, materials and at Christmas gifts. This year we were blessed to have a special offering also from the church to do an Easter presentation. So we did an Easter outreach on the ships. Brother Clark and I was in the shipyard and we went to the ship. Well, now that during the pandemic, we only get up to the gangway. We saw the lady in the film, she get up to the gangway too. That's as far as we go up the gangway and go on the deck. And we ministered. Long before that, we will get into uh, in the galley and we'll minister there and things. But now we have to cut things short and things like that. But we're praying that this pandemic, we thank God for the pandemic. God, the pandemic opened so many other avenues and blessings. But we're praying to God that things will come in a way that we could get to be more effective in the ministry. This week I had a conversation. Is right now is one of the ships that I normally visit, but I couldn't get on the ship. But I had ministry to the captain on Zoom and on Messenger. Even record something for me, but I could have played because it's it kind of recorded smooth slow on the time. I didn't have to put the, put them together, edit them and put them together. But he sent message, he sent greetings to, to the church 
today, Captain Renato Gulio, and he's right now on the floor. Well, they bring wheat for us. If the ship them will bring wheat, we can eat bread and roti and all those nice things that we have. So he right now they are unloading wheat. They're supposed to sail tomorrow morning. God's willing. What's the way to keep up when they get to unload all the wheat and everything? So hallelujah. So I want to say a special thanks to each one of you. Those that give through the church, those that give personally to me, and they are a personal ministry part of mine that gives to me. And I want to thank those that um, will be coming on also, those that lacked opportunity. But today you have the opportunity. Um, you could just sign your form up and you could be part of this special ministry that is happening right in our own country. This, this ministry is a Christian ministry that is supported by Guyanese Christians. Hallelujah. Started and it's been continued. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This morning, I want to just share a word with you. I don't know. Wow. Same thing happened this afternoon again, like this morning. Anyhow, hallelujah. We're going to share the word. This morning, um, or today, see Sunday, our, the theme is abandonment. As you heard, you see the ship um, in the video. And our text, our see Sunday text is from Mark 6, 1 to 13. Mark 6. Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. It reads as this. Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is, which is given to him? <laughs> That such mighty works are performed by his hands. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now, he could not do many, he, he could not do might, no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the village in a circuit, in a circuit teaching. And he called the twelve to himself and began to send them out two by two and give them power over unclean spirit. He commanded them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bag, no bread, no copper in their money, bag, in their money belts, but to wear sandals and not to, put two, not to put on two tunics. Also, he said to them, in whatever place you enter a house, stay there till you depart from that place. And whoever will not receive you nor hear you, when you depart from there, shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them. Assuredly, I say unto you, it will be more toler tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. So they went out and preached. So they went out and preached that people should repent, and they cast out many demons, and anointed with oil many who were sick, and healed them. As I mentioned before, our team for see Sunday this year is abandonment. It is an opportunity for us to remember the human cost of shipping, and what something sometimes happens when shipping companies close down and when ship owners run into financial difficulties. The majority of shipping companies and ship owners are honest and reasonable employers. They make arrangements so that if they, their business fails, then the seafarers on board the ship 
can be transported home. Unfortunately, things sometimes go wrong, and the shipping company may not be able to afford to pay the seafarers to return to their homes or pay them what they are owed. When the shipping companies run into trouble in this way, seafarers, seafarers are left They are left to fend for themselves. They might not be paid, and they might not have enough money to return home. In this situation, they find themselves abandoned and alone in foreign ports far away from their homes. When seafarers are abandoned, they may also find themselves without basic things such as food and water. They are without the means to get home to their families, and in many cases, unable to communicate with their families. This is what happens when seafarers are abandoned by unscrupulous employers and left to fend for themselves. In our reading today, Jesus face, or face, faces a kind of abandonment. He is rejected by people from his own tongue, Nazareth. Anyone who thinks that G anyone will think that Jesus would be celebrated there, especially after the way in which his ministry had developed with all the miracles and followers. Returning home should have been a joy or a joyful occasion, but it wasn't. Jesus taught in the synagogues in Nazareth. The people there knew him, and they recognized that he had great wisdom, and he was doing miraculous acts. They witnessed those events, with their own eyes, but instead of, do, instead of being joyful and rejoicing, they criticized and rejected Jesus. Jesus was met by resentment and rejection. This rejection is a kind of abandonment because Jesus simply wasn't accepted by people who knew him and his family. The very people who should have supported him and loved him actually abandoned him instead. The Bible tells us that despite this, Jesus continued to minister. He traveled to other villages teaching, and he begins to send his disciples out two by two. He sent them to preach and to pray for people, to cast out demons and cure people who are sick. The disciples have been sent by Jesus to bring life to others and to rescue them in their abandonment. By doing this, Jesus shows us the answer to abandonment. The answer to rejection and abandonment is companionship, relationship and love. In this way, the loneliness and estrangement that comes from abandonment is overcome. Jesus still does this today and respond to abandonment by sending Christians out to seek people in need. This is a ministry in action, and this is what we do through the work of Port of Hope Ministries. Jesus calls us to respond to people who have been abandoned. He sends us out to work in partnership with other people to respond to abandoned seafarers. Our response is the good news for seafarers. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. All over the world, people partner with various ministries to seafarers and respond to seafarers who have been abandoned or who are in need. Some of them knit hats. Most women abroad knit hats and give to the seafarers, um, seafarers centers so they could give to the seafarers. Some bar volunteers ship visitors, where that is allowed in certain countries, right? Some of them pray about the work, and some give the work to the work of the port ministry, like some of you do. In this way, in partnership with people from all over the world, we respond to abandonment and lonely seafarers by giving them companionship and support. Jesus, who experienced abandonment himself, asks us today to respond to seafarers who have been abandoned. When we respond to them, 
the love of Jesus is brought to seafarers in desperate need of love and help. Jesus calls us to help those seafarers who are abundant. How can you help? What can you do today to bring love and life to others? How can you participate in bringing the good news to seafarers who may be lonely and abandoned? We would like to thank you for supporting our vital work. Seafarers are the unseen key workers who have continued to keep the global economy afloat during the COVID pandemic. They deserve to be celebrated and thanked. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I want to say today and affirm God's word that God is at work around us. How many believe that? That God is working. Jesus says in, in <coughs> excuse me. In, in John 5, 17, 19 to 20, but Jesus answered them, and said, My, this after he had finished healing the guy at Bethesda, the pool, that was there 38 years, and they were accusing him of healing a man on the Sabbath. And Jesus answered them and said, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Most assuredly I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. For the father loved the son and he, show him, he shows him all things that he himself does. <coughs> Hallelujah. Very important that Jesus did nothing that he didn't see the father do. Hallelujah. You know, I was taken aback. And Wednesday night, when Brother Harold was talking to our house group leaders in the in house group leaders meeting about biblic the biblical foundation of house groups, I remember working in Venezuela, and when I had this ream of word in my spirit, that, that from this text that we read this morning, see Sunday, the text in Mark six ten, and he says also he said to them. In whatever place you enter a house, stay there till you depart. Till, uh, till you depart from that place. Now this word was a Rima word for us and for me. Because we were going through a little difficulty in the time of church life. Sometimes you have a lull in, in the church activity. People for different reasons not coming. And, and you know, the other cells were good, were prospering. But something or the other, the whole church. And so... As I was looking and we were praying, something happened. One of our members for one of the cells, she died. And so our cell group had to look after that, that funeral, the week, and everything. And somehow, the people that were supposed to be there, they were afraid to go to the lady's family's home because they weren't Christians. The lady that died was a Christian, but our family were unsaved. But the lady always prayed for her family. And so... Nobody wanted to go there. We say the place got demons, the house got demons. These people got a lot of things. They don't serve the Lord. Indeed, the people had a lot of uh, what we call saints in Venezuela. These, these, these statues of different people, different saints and things that they worship. Um, and so, they had them, yes. But I want, it, 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 it's strange to me that Christians frighten demons. Because... That's what God called us for. G Jesus gives us power. He gives the disciples authority over these evil spirits. And I think his place where people tell me we got the demons is there we got to go. Because the demons, they don't have no legal rights there. They have to be cast out and set the people free because that's what God gave us, that, that ministry. Right? And so, I know it's, it's find it strange when people frank to go in these places and say, the place got demons and things like that. If I want to Really, if you have a relationship with Christ, or you have Christ in your heart, or whatsoever is it. But anyhow, the only person who could have get to go with me was a little guy, a guy, a young guy that's always backslide when he gets the job. <coughs> when he's not working, he's faithful. 
the church. You see me every church day, every time we do things in church. The minute you get a job, you backslide. Because some friends is be a, a lead him off to go and smoke drugs or drink. And sometimes I gotta go and look for him in the drug hole, take him out from there, or in a rum 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 shop and bring him home, bring him out, and thing like that. But he's the only man wanted to go with me. So I said, okay, buddy, come. And we used to go and sit down by the lady, and the lady would accept us. She would give me coffee to drink as Latin hospitality. The first thing, give you a little cup of coffee. And it's a brew, it's strong. And thing, and she, sometimes she might give me snack or kind of thing. And she said, Pastor, I don't want to be a Christian. I said, no, I'm not coming to make you a Christian. I'm just going to share the word of God with you. And she would sit and entertain me and listen. <clears throat> and I would look in the house and I'd see these statues. And after time, I saw them, they, they were just disappearing one by one. So they get this little bit, little, little. Eventually, they left one. And then one day, she told me, pass you know, I break up all them things in the back and just bury them, burn them in the rubbish heap. And I said, okay. And she said, I got one that was not mine. It's my daughter own. I can't do nothing to that. So, well, it's just clean the house. It could always fall and break. And when it break, it ain't good no more. It throw it away. Anyhow, the daughter I was there, and uh, she normally used to be around sometimes, listening to the words. So she too, the Holy Spirit worked in her life, and she threw away her, her doll, her doll, her um, idol. And so, in that same house, those same people that didn't want to turn Christian, the lady received Christ, and we opened a cell group right there that was named New Dawn. Because our cell groups in, 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 in Venezuela, we, we all, in the church, we, each cell group had a name, a prophetic name. The members of that group would give the church, uh, that cell a name, something that they want to see God do for the community, a prophetic name. All right? I used to oversee, like the zone, I used as like a zone leader, I used to oversee a set of the, a set of the ones, but I had my own, I would want, want to, I had two of them. All right? And so one, the first one was the feeders of sheep, right? Alimentador de ovejas. And then the second one, this one was what I, that I found really was um, the, the, we call the, a new dawn, right? Nuevo man, Nuevo Manacer, new dawn. And so God is working. Come to it is that God is working all around us, but we need to tap in on what God is doing. God involves us in what he's doing. Jesus recognized that his father is always working on earth to accomplish his divine purpose. God did not create the world and then abandon it to run by itself. He is not sitting in a heavenly throne room passively observing the, activity, the activities on earth. Right? God is orchestrating history, brethren. God is present in the middle of human activity. God is actively at work redeeming a lost world. And he chose to involve his servants in carrying out his redemptive plan. Hallelujah. So God is at work redeeming the world. Hallelujah. And Paul called that, and, 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 and it, is, it, is, it is written in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 20. Stating, therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not inputting their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation right so we have the word of reconciliation committed to us we have a commitment god has committed something to us the word can you say now then we are ambassadors of christ as though god were pleading through us we implore you on christ's behalf be reconciled to god hallelujah that's the message of reconciliation Hallelujah. So God is at work reconciling the world himself. And since he has chosen to carry out that reconciliation through his people, what are we to do? Are we? How are we to respond to that commission? 
If we go back to Christ's words in John 5, we find a clear model in the way the Lord Jesus approached approach knowing and doing the Father's will. We could outline Jesus' example this way. The Father has been working all along. B, the Father has me working. I do nothing on my own initiative. I watch and see what the Father is doing. I do what I see the Father is doing. The Father loves me. He shows me everything that he himself is doing. Jesus often <coughs> spoke about his relationship with the Father and his dependence on the Father to show him what to do. Jesus made it clear that the Father initiated the relationship and invited the Son to be involved in his activity. The Father revealed his plan and the Son joined the Father where he was at work. Hallelujah. Brethren, we have to have the eyes to see, to observe what God is doing. And God is working, as we say, all over. God is working all the time and in all places. You know, they ask you, where is the obvious place you could find God working? What would you say? One of the places that is obvious that God is working. Right in the church. Right among us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If we look around, people who are coming in church, visitors, they come here because God is doing something in their lives. God has begun some work in their lives. They might pass in and they might say, you know, we just hear the music and we stop in by accident and they might feel it's accident stopping. And we would let it go along the way without trying to follow them up and get more information with them. God is working. That's why these people come. They got no accident. God is working all the time in all people in their lives. God is orchestrating his redemptive plan all the time. Every minute he's working. We have to catch God in the spirit. But to do that, we have to build a relationship with God, a real love relationship with God. To hear God and to be able to tap in on some of the things. Sometimes we tap in on things, and even sometimes by fluke. But God is so good. Me, myself, I tap in for a lot of things by fluke sometimes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be ashamed to tell you. But God is so good, but because we have a relationship with God, it is mercy. He will show us something, but if we build this more deep love relationship with God, love, not just only going where we need something and looking for his hands, but looking to get that love relationship. You know, we got to love on you. It's, you see how... Um, Samson lose all his power. Is he loving up? And he tell the lady secret. When you love up with God, God will tell you secret too. Right? He love up, you love up, a love relationship with God. Lord, I love you. You got time to worship the Lord. And you, you're not only going for acts or nothing, but you're building a deep relationship with God. Right? And God give you that, 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 that he would give you you get access to God more. Because he said, this person ain't really asking, asking, asking for different things, but he's asking, he's building that relationship with me. And when you build a, a relationship with a lover, that lover feels so good, and he releases things to you. The Bible tells me we were, we were created to bring pleasure to God. Hallelujah. Not only asking for stuff, but when he's pleased. The Bible says that those that come to God, those that want to please God, right? Must exercise faith. God does what, does what pleases God, right? Where we believe that he is he's God and he is able, right, to, to, to do what we ask him for and things like that. He rewards that, that, that faith, right? So that relationship we must build. And then God revealed things to us. We see things. As we observe and we look in church, you might see somebody in church. You might know the person or there might be a new believer coming to church. That's a good place. Befriend them, find it from them, talk to them. And God is working there. I wouldn't be able to tell you all the things we got what we gone over time today. But God is working, and He has been working, and now God has us working. God has me working. Right? 
I do not do, I, Jesus says, I do nothing on my own initiative. I watch to see what the Father is doing. I do what I see the Father is doing. The Father loves me. He shows me everything that he is doing. So once we are plugged in, once we are, we are focusing, we will see a lot of things that the Lord is doing. You might see a, a, a person coming here, I'll tattoo a ball in the face, and you might freak them and say, this person here. <coughs> and that's why we're working in all these different zones. And people from these different zones will be coming in all form and all shape and all style. But they're coming here because God has begun a work in their lives. Now we are partnering with God. We are the physical component of God. His eyes, his feet, his hands. And now God is using us to bring that love and compassion to the world. Amen, brethren? We have to partner with God. Right? A lot of times we are not, we are not um, prepared to, sacri- to, to deny ourselves, to change our lifestyle, because to help somebody sometimes, or to collaborate with God in what he's doing sometimes, means for you to adjust your life. And we are like to be in our comfort zone, and we don't want to adjust our lives. <coughs> By getting somebody to come at your home, you have to change up a lot of things. Maybe the time you spend with your wife, or your, 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 you know, the things you might do in, but you need to allow God to work. Some of us got to left off some stuff that we... We, we, um, we like to do just to give God place that he could work so that we could be able to visit somebody and to disciple them, to sit with somebody, to pray with them, you know, and to be that instrument that God wants to use. We are his hands and his feet. We are his ears. We are, his, we are the instrument God worked through. And just like how Jesus was used by God through the power of the Holy Spirit, we here could be used by God through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? We have to keep in sync with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, is who do the work in us, right? Don't find out to find out what, too much of what gift you got. Listen to it. Listen to the call. Once God call you, he's going to equip you. Once the leaders them call you and say, man, we have this, 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 this um, assignment. Don't find it. Well, I can't do this. Just say amen because God tell them something. Make them come to you, Right? God tell them something, make them come and ask you. Now God is saying something, give me a sign. Man, don't, but it's a human thing. When God called Moses, he doesn't begin to talk. He can't talk. He starts to stammer more. You know, say, so, Lord, I can't talk. God and God say, man, this will make the mouth. It's me. So God don't want, you don't look for your ability. He wants to know you're available. Your availability. And he called upon you. He's the one who would give you what you want. No, mommy, God is gifting. You have the Holy Spirit. He is the gift. The main gift you got to God because His Holy Spirit manifests all these different forms, what we call gift, in you. So once you have Him, if He needs you right now to prof- prophesy in this situation on the road to this person, you're going to prophesy because the Holy Spirit will prophesy through you because you avail yourself. Right? I talk about the different offices now. I talk about all the gifting could work through each one of us. Right? If we avail ourselves because of the same Holy Spirit, what God wants a body. God wants a body. You have to get a body. Jesus said, Here I am. Send me. This body is prepared for you. And He came and died for us. Right? God wants a body that He could work through. Hallelujah. And so we avail to that. And allow God, don't bother with gift you got. You might know what gift you got, just a veil. Pastor say, um, thing. Okay, I mean, Pastor. A lot of pastors call me and, and or is delegated authority call me. And I say, amen. And then I go and pray. I start, that's how I start my Christian thing. The pastor talk to me and tell me, I never said no. I said, I can try. Yes, amen. And then I go to God and say, God, really, you know, this assignment here, eh? I need your help. Help me. To do this thing. But once we focus on ourselves, you get a problem. Because you focus on you. Man, I didn't train in this thing and, and I didn't do this. Okay, the training thing got its merit. But once you avail, that's what God wants. The rest will come. Because everything, God will give you your own skill that you need once you avail. 
He'll put it in you. The Holy Spirit have it. Just like how he, he tell Moses to build the temple and, 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 and he can put his spirit into these men and they can do all these different craft and all kinds of things. It's God's spirit within you. Give you the ability, the training, the capacity to do these different things. So we got to plug into the source. We got to hear the Holy Spirit. We got to listen to what the leadership, the leadership is leading us and get there and plug in and say, Amen, Lord. Help me now. Just help me. Just show me. Direct me. Give me the strength. Give me the ability to do what you wanted to do. Through me. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord God, that you have chosen us. Lord, you could have taken this thing and do it all by yourself, but you want to bring us us. Bring us into it, Lord. Oh, God, because we are the redeemed. And no angel cannot sing that song. We are redeemed because they were never redeemed. But we who knew sin, God, we who are deep in sin, God, you deliver us. God, you reconcile us to yourself through your son, Jesus Christ. Now you give us that same ministry to go, that word to go and speak it into the lives of men and women. To give them that compassion, to go alongside of them with the Holy Spirit, Lord to minister to their needs, to listen to their hearts cry. Oh, God, to show them the compassion of Christ. Oh, God, we pray, God. Lord, you can't give them compassion because you're a spirit, but in through us, you could exercise your compassion through each one of us. God, help us, Lord, to be less selfish, Lord, to be selfless. God, to put aside ourselves many times when there's a need. It's not sometimes we don't hear or see what you're doing. But sometimes we don't want to join in. But Father God, help us. Forgive us. And help us to be a people that want to partner with you in whatever you're doing in this world. That's why you've recruited us to be with you. And so God, we thank you. We pray to God you'd help us, each one of us, as believers, Lord, to understand we don't just get saved, we just get saved sick. But you've called us, Lord, to greater things. Oh, Father God, help us, Lord, as we go forth in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, brethren.